thank you again to everybody who came out this early. I know it's a little early in the morning um, for students especially. Um, but uh, I'm Perrin Brady. I'm currently a senior in the History, Technology, and Society program. Um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, environmental justice and some research that I did last semester for a history seminar uh, on sustainability and social justice. So uh, this class, it was only about, you know, like seven of us students. Uh, it went through a history of the conservation movement, a history of the alternative technology movement, and of the environmental justice movement. Uh, ending with students presenting research at the HTS Research Symposium um, on research on a topic that was of interest to them. So um, early on in my research, trying to find you know, what I wanted to talk about, what I wanted to research, I found an article uh, from a UC Berkeley team in 2022, uh, kind of proving the association between historical redlining and present day air pollution disparities. Uh, in uh, cities across America. Um, and so one of the findings was that Atlanta was one of four metropolitan areas where the disproportionate impact was much more pronounced. So being in Atlanta, I wanted to uh, look at kind of the history of this issue, the connection from redlining to the present day over the past uh, about a century. Um, so redlining, if you do not know, was a racialized housing policy in the 1930s. Um, it assigned neighborhoods grades, red being the worst grade, um, and these grades ultimately determined uh, whether residents could get housing loans that would let them experience social mobility. Um, and not to surprise, in the 1930s, these grades were um, very discriminatory against majority black and immigrant communities, and so it limited their social mobility. Um, and so when I started at the source in the original redlining maps of Atlanta, um, there was already language of smog and air pollution. So in one neighborhood, D18, which is uh, present day uh, west of Marietta Street, uh, mainly over the AUC, Atlanta University Center, which is a hub for HBCUs. Um, it was surrounded by industrial mills, rail lines, and in its description included words like afflicted by smoke, dirt, and noises. Uh, very contradictory to neighborhoods like A8, which was in the north of Atlanta, um, likely around now Buckhead, uh, was far from industrial plants and it got descriptions like well wooded. Um, so already comments on the environmental conditions of the neighborhoods. Um, the history of Atlanta air for the next like 80 years um, is most of the bulk of my research paper, but for the sake of condensing it, it's a bit hard to cover in five minutes. Um, I'll just give a short version of the narrative I found. Um, so essentially the overarching theme was that discriminatory policies and uh, misaligned priorities in Atlanta caused disparate impacts of smog, uh, first from industry, then from transit consistently over the past about a century. So in the 1930s, redline neighborhoods were typically surrounded by industrial polluters in the city. Uh, and racialized housing policies gave these residents less economic and spatial mobility, uh, giving them less freedom to escape uh, undesirable environmental conditions. Then in the mid 20th century, uh, as factories left American cities, and as massive highway projects went underway after the Federal Highway Act, uh, transit became the major polluter and continued to affect marginalized communities. Um, actually, one of my classmates in this class did some really great research on how the interstates in Atlanta cut through and left, an in, uh, left a lasting impact on uh, majority black communities in Atlanta. Um, then in 1970 uh, came the Clean Air Act and the EPA with growing environmental concerns but the Georgia Department of Transportation uh, chose to keep finding loopholes in environmental regulations and chose to continue emissions heavy car centric plans. Um, just all throughout my research, it was just a consistent history of the city of Atlanta favoring development over environmental and social concerns. Um, so in terms of any implications of research on this topic, um, I hope it would, one, uh, 
inspire citizens to demand more of city officials and to look more into their regional development plans over time. Um, I also hope that scholars in this field would actually be able to tie in the idea of reparations for communities uh, into environmental justice research. I think it would be very interesting to see what that would look like for the communities uh, surrounding Georgia Tech here in Atlanta. And for Georgia Tech, I hope that the institution continues to use its uh, position as an anchor institution to advocate for more sustainable solutions like public transit development. Um, Georgia Tech is doing a lot to make change makers. You're going to hear from <laughs> about a dozen more of them in the next presentations. Um, but uh, I think um, it would be lovely to see the administration continuing themselves to be change makers in Atlanta, uh, advocating for solid solutions. Thank you.